Rachel's growing things. She's got a green thumb this time of year. Hi, Rachel. It's light, light green, the palest of green. But we're going to try to help you take your thumb and turn it green to save some green. How much can you save by growing your own veggies? We are on a mission to figure that out in our first of many Thrifty Thursday segments. The first step, buying seeds. We found a plant expert, horticulturist Mark Conlock, and took him shopping. What do I need to get started if I'm going to do my own seeds? Sure, well once you know what seeds you're gonna buy, what you're gonna plant in your garden, and you want to start them from seed ahead of time, one really nice thing is this little seed starting kit because it has everything you need to get going and growing. Can I over. reuse that next year? Yeah, definitely. Um, this, this one has these little peat pellets, so what you do is you just soak these in water and they expand and fill that little cell. So if you wanted to reuse it, you either have to buy some more of those next year or you can use a soilless media, which is like peat, perlite, and vermiculite. So the cool season crops are things like carrots, radish, lettuce, spinach, and now that we're starting to get into the beginning of springtime, those are crops that actually, like right around now, you can even begin to seed outdoors. What would be good ones to start in my little container here? Those would be the ones that are the warm season crops, like there's some tomatoes here, Okay. and uh, peppers would be good ones to seed in your container, as well okay. as eggplants. These go in the ground now, these go in the ground later, and these seeds I'm going to start in this handy dandy kit. So how much money did we spend on seeds? For the vegetable seeds, we spent $25.50. We got a lot of seeds for that. As for the flower seeds, because we want to add a little color to our garden, that bill was a little less. We spent $15.77, and we're going to get a lot of color for that price. So we think we did pretty well when it came to how much we spent. Mark is here. Hi, Mark. Hey, Rachel. That was fun going shopping, but now the hard work begins. Yeah, it's a little work now, but not too bad. Now, do you think... We're talking about being economical, and during when we were shopping, you said really it can be economical for beans. Beans, for example, right. this one seed pack for a dollar nineteen could feed me and my neighbor. Sure, yeah, you bet, and you probably have a lot more that you could give away even because if you feel that package, there's a lot of beans in there, and you're not going to need all that in just you know a small garden, a ten by ten garden or whatever. So share your seeds. Yeah, you bet. And then you're you're saving even more money. Right, and maybe you'll get something cool from your neighbor. Oh, okay, so neighborhood swap, maybe. There we go, yeah. All right, all right, so we're going to get started. We bought these uh, handy-dandy kits, and the first thing you'll notice is they, they have these little pod things in them. What is that? Right, that's the little peat pellet, so what you want to do is make sure you put some water in here and expand it, Okay. like we did on a couple of these ones over here. I'm going to try to get a shot of this before you fill all of it up so that people can see how they expand. Okay, can you pour some in right here? I mean, it sure. goes pretty fast. The kids love this. We had the neighborhood kids over while we did this, and they just blow up in there, and then you're all full of, of dirt in there. Right, so then you're ready to plant, so you just want to take your seeds out of your package and decide how exactly you want to do it, like on the one over here that you have the label on. You're going to want to probably label what you have Okay, planted. what are you planting? You're going to work on some flowers right now, the marigolds? Yeah, I'll put the marigolds okay, in here. Okay, we'll borrow in, mine. Yeah, in general, your seeds, you want to plant them about two to three times the diameter of the seed. Well, this one's kind of flat, so you just put it on there, kind of touch it into the soil, and maybe take a little from a different uh, pellet and put it on top of there, and you're good to go. Um, okay, you just put one little seed in there? Right, yep. You don't want to take your pack and sprinkle it? No, nope, what you want to do is put one per cell because you'll have all the nutrients and all the root zone for that one particular plant, and that way you'll get one big healthy plant per cell. Okay. Otherwise, if you have a whole bunch of them, what you want to do is either transplant them, but then you can kind of shock the seedling, or if you have a bunch, just cut them off with the scissors and just leave one per cell. Okay. I'm going to have to do that. <laughs> I think I put too many seeds in. How do you yeah. know how to do that? Is that information on the back of the package? Um, I don't think it is, actually, but okay. um, You'll learn you know. from experience. <laughs> yeah, okay. right. um, so once you, you plant them, mm -hmm. you cover it. And this thing also has this nice cover that you thought was fabulous. And why is yeah. that? It's great because it allows light in, and it keeps the, the top of the, the soil moist so that the seed can germinate better because the seed has to imbibe water or get okay. water in it to, in order to germinate. Um, once you have it going, the thing you might want to do is use this little mist bottle if the top does okay. happen to dry out to just mist it in. Uh, that way you don't 
water on top and get the seed all splashed okay, around. Okay, that's another mistake I made because I poured too much water in there. This is what I came up with. I planted these seeds two weeks ago, and we have some growth, so I was excited. Yeah, but I have great. a couple of problems, too. There's some white fuzzy things on there, and that's not good, right? Yeah, what it is is just a damping off disease, so it kind of can kill the seedling, or you see some of these tops that are um, dead like that. So what I would do is just remove that stuff from there so it doesn't spread to your other plants. And then the thing, once you have these seedlings emerge like this, you can remove that top cover because it doesn't have to be quite as moist. Okay. And then you can let it um, dry out between waterings a little bit more so that you get a nice root system and the roots go down to the bottom of that cell pack. Otherwise, they'll just stay up kind of by the top. How long before they start looking like that? Oh, a couple more weeks, three or, you know, okay. three or so weeks probably. And leave them in here then until they're like this, and then can I plant them in the ground or in a planter? Um, yeah, you're going to have to wait till after like the last average frost date around May 15th for some of the warmer season things. Like I wouldn't plant the marigolds out yet, but something like a pansy or a viola you can plant out because it can take a light frost still. So it depends on what exactly you're planting out there. Well, we're going to be keeping an eye on this all summer long. I hope you'll stay with us. Yeah. and kind of help us through the process because at the end of the summer we would like to take a look at how much we got how many flowers we got to grow how many vegetables we were able to eat and compare them at the grocery store thanks for getting us started you bet I'm it's our, our first thrifty thursday and uh, we'll have more online fox11online.com